guys welcome back to my channel today is going to be my five recommendations for cozy fall reads and i'm these are just the ones that i thought of but um the ones that i think would be perfect for this season if you're not into horror or spooky or dark reads so i will just get started with these it's going to be a short video i'm still getting over a cold so hopefully i can get through it <laughs> the first one is the hobbit by J.R. tolkien and i like to read this in the fall um it's really a good story, a good adventure. It's a, you know, not really a standalone. It's obviously the prequel to Lord of the Rings, but you can just read this book and it's very good, very entertaining. Uh, I love the writing. I like Bilbo. Uh, there's really not a character that I don't love in this. Obviously the story of Bilbo, um, you know, joining the dwarves on their quest to get their treasure back from Smaug the dragon is pretty well known at this point. There's tons of traffic outside. I apologize. <laughs> Um, but if you have seen the movies, I would encourage you to read the book because if you've seen my other videos about the first and second Hobbit movies, you know that I'm not a huge fan. I had a lot of issues with those movies, although Rings of Power is making me look on them a lot more favorably, but I could do a whole video on the character assassination with, uh, Thranduil, I think that's how you say his name, um, Legolas is dead. You know, he just didn't deserve it. <laughs> I just don't know why they portrayed him that way. You're the Hobbit. It's completely different. Um, but I really would recommend this. This is a fun adventure book and definitely a great one for fall. Next, I have A Walk to Remember by Nicholas Sparks. These are going to be all genres, so it, hopefully you'll find something that you enjoy. I am not a fan of Nicholas Sparks. Um, never felt the need to read any of his other books except for this one. I have no interest in crying unless, you know, I have to. Uh, so that's why I just don't really feel connected to his other stories, but this one is so good. The movie is good too, but obviously it's a modern take. The book is actually set in 1958 and, um, it has a very sweet love story between the two main characters, um, Jamie and Landon, and it's going to be much different from the movie and that this is a much softer, sweeter story. There's not going to be the bullying aspect and the, you know, modern high school take that you get from the movie, which was fine as an adaptation. Um, it's not quite very faithful, but the, the main ideas are the same. Uh, it is a tearjerker. <laughs> so if you don't know, maybe that's a small spoiler. Um, but I really like this one. I think it's great. I think the relationship between, uh, Jamie and Landon is really good as a romance. And I think the relationship between her and her dad is a lot more like better explained and explored in the book. So I definitely recommend this one. Next, Northanger Abbey, which I love, and I have done this as a buddy read with my brother before I've, I've read it several times. Um, this one I feel like is perfect if you are looking for something that's Austin, but it's not super long, it's short. And also it's funny. It's kind of the like humorous take that she has on the Gothic romances that were very popular at that time. And I really appreciate that. I think it's really good. <laughs> the character of Catherine Moreland is you know, she's a bit iffy, but I like her. She's very imaginative. She is being introduced kind of into society with her friend and their bath, I believe, because where else would they be? And she's, you know, very excited. It's her first time really being out. And she's meeting men and she meets Henry Tilney, who is, you know, the son of this very wealthy family. And then, um, of course, she falls in love with him very early on and then gets invited to go stay at Northanger Abbey, which is like their family home. And then imagines all these very interesting, you know, crazy scenarios of things that have happened at this, you know, dark foreboding uh, Northanger Abbey. And she is mostly wrong, um, but she kind of just lets her imagination get the better of her. And it's pretty funny. I think this is a really good humorous take on like, those, you know, really over the top gothic romances that were very popular this time. So highly recommend. Oh, and H Henry Tilney, top notch, like my favorite Austin hero of all time. Gotta love him. I mean, I do, but okay. Next we have The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. And I could obviously suggest Anne of Green Gables just as well here, but I'm going to go with The Blue Castle just because I feel like so many people love and talk about Anne, you know, Anne in October, it's such a thing, but this book really deserves more love. This is a really great story about an older character that you just don't see a lot from Ella Montgomery. And, um, this is Valency Sterling and I think she's supposed to be like 29 when we first meet her. 
and her life as a very like repressed um woman who's she's you know basically been resigned to spinsterhood by her family and she suddenly has some news that makes her have a whole new lease on life and she decides she's gonna say whatever she wants and she's gonna do whatever she wants and this is great i love this story i love um the romance in it i think it's amazing i love um her character development and how she just starts speaking her mind and all the people around her are like what's happened why is she like this um, and also it's just a nice, it's nice to see an older character represented as like, hey, look, you still have a whole life. And it's rare that these aren't really young characters. And even older books, most of the girls are very young. So um, with the classic, it's nice to see, you know, this representation for, you know, a, a older, more mature heroine. Finally, for a cozy mystery, I will murder mystery. I will say Agatha Christie, anything Miss Marple. This is my copy of one of her um, books, but it has many different books in it. Uh, this, I think any Agatha Christie books are, would work, but for me, the coziest of cozy is going to be Miss Marple. She's an older woman um, who is not a detective. She's just an observer of humanity, and she is very good at getting to the heart of the situation and being able to figure out things that really puzzle the other, you know, detectives or the people around her. And I like that. I like her, um, especially my favorite was Nemesis. There was a Caribbean mystery or Caribbean, however you want to say it. And then Nemesis um, are like a part one and two. Both are really good. Um, and I would definitely recommend. I think the ones where she's more of a main player in the story are better. Because uh, there are definitely some where she is kind of brought in at the end to have the aha moment and tell everybody, oh, this is what happened. Um, but I love Miss Marple. Um, as a character, she's great. Uh, the murder mysteries, like I said, are all really good. And these are like the definition to me of like cozy murder mystery. They're perfect for just hanging out by the fire and reading. And um, I, like I said, Nemesis is really good. Obviously read the first one, uh, Caribbean mystery first. But those are going to be my five recommendations for cozy fall reads. And if you've read any of them or if there's anyone that I missed that you feel is essential to read in the fall, please let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe and tell me what you're reading. I'll talk to you soon.